maybe if they go to other schools and they finish, they will not be able to find a job for themselves. But if they go to attend technical schools, they will be able to have their own handiwork to be able to help themselves and help their relatives. So, the KGB mentioned it is said that uh, if you give them to a child and it does not uh, begin to to sit up, it cannot begin to crawl and it will not be able to come. So, the foundation to be the main uh, primary sector, elementary sector, from KG to but if natural channel for the cinema technical, I will be very happy. They need a relay, they need a foundation, and the foundation should be from the kindergarten up to the junior high. So that if it is possible to do all that, including a, a senior high technical school, that will be good. Uh, an added uh, development for them. <laughs> he, he says his greater interest is in the technical school. Despite the fact that he mentioned the foundation schools, his greater interest is in the Technical school. I am not talking about because it's greater interest in the technical school because all around here, until you get to uh, Tamale, you wouldn't find a, a technical school around here. So like uh, 90 miles away from here, there is no technical school. That's why he thinks if there is a technical school here, it will help me. So last one, we will Make more land. We are ready to, or I'm ready to be. If we need more land for that purpose, he's ready to offer that. So he's a very tired What he has come to do is to see how we are living. Give us the blessings of the people. As for students and other things, it's for you. Thank 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 you. You and pray for everyone around. Uh, for everyone who comes to the and Thank you so much for this privilege that you find time to receive me with this grace uh, Archbishop uh, Philip. I know you are very busy. Yes. 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 But, uh, like Apostolic Nuncio, I am the ambassador of 
Pope uh, Francis. So I represented him uh, in your beloved country, Ghana. And uh, of course, he would like to be present everywhere. It's impossible, impossible so he has sent his envoy. Uh, well, here yeah, now, I get what you are more here for nine you, I get a book. I have a lot of fear. Here, I think here, I'm a problem. I'm a problem with the two here. I'm a father, no, you're not from the other one. So, young master, the cook, and so imagine it or some more coffee or banner. A trap on you. Bob is the head of Catholic Church, but he also made some initiatives which are regarding all work. Yeah, we didn't want to have the affair with him. I'm not going to be able to have the affair And recently, <coughs> two years ago, he published an encyclical letter to the Catholics and also to all people of goodwill and in this letter, he has asked all leaders, all people of good will, to build a new world of universal brotherhood. Like human beings, we have many differences like religion, profession, age, etc. But first of all, we have a lot of common things. For example, Earth. we are living in one planet, and this depends on all of, all of us how our life is between on that. Uh, and this is important to so introduce between people this new <coughs> mentality of brotherhood. <coughs> to look at uh, an other neighbor, not only my neighbor, but my brother. And it means if this is my brother, I should love him. <laughs> And I am very happy that you take care also of Catherine. Thank you for all what have you done for Catherine Church, what we are doing. Many places that people even in Acta, you see that there is more needed of the professional people than, for example, lawyers or journalists. 
he was arrested and told to deny his faith and he refused. They killed him. Everything might have been that once they killed him. We are not telling you about St. Polica for you to run away from your faith, but to strengthen you. That no matter what happens, God doesn't leave the people who speak for him.
the tool Jesus and Jesus said, don't chase him away. But to you, yes, you will say that you never want to jump, not so trusting. But to you, yes, you will say, tell your own man, tell your own man. Jesus saw in him the faith that he had. Yes, you are not going to come more often in the world. And yes, you now can get you a good job. The people that you are to be in our midst today, we thank him for their lives. We thank him for the life of our Holy Father. We thank him for the lives of the leaders of the church. And we ask that God may continue to fill them with his Holy Spirit, that their faith may inspire us to grow closer to God. For this we pray to the Lord.
Sanctify our offerings by your blessing, O Lord, we pray, and by your grace may we be set at fire with that flame of your love too, which sent Polycarp overcome every bad determined through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyr, Polycarp, poured out like Christ to glorify your name shows forth your marvelous works by which in our weakness you perfect your power and on the people bestow strength to bear your witness through Christ our Lord. And so is the powers of heaven to be worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty with our end to be acclaimed. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have had us worthy to be in presence and minister to you. And we pray that partaking of the blood and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Henrik, his delegate, Ghana, be on your wedding servant and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Polycarp, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the image of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the service command and Paul by divine teaching, we dare to say, the Lord Lord, we pray from every evil, gracious you, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Indeed, the Eucharist that you have just participated unites us with God and among ourselves. The Eucharist draws each of us closer to Christ as individual and also as community. My compatriot, Pope St. John Paul II, said that this powerful reality reminds us that a truly Eucharist community cannot be closed enough on itself. Rather, the Eucharist challenges us to recognize our role, our mission, our place within a community and the human family. Where does this role or mission come from? As we all know that by virtue of your baptism, you became members of Christ and are incorporated into the church and made sharers in her mission. Through your baptism, you are incorporated into the church into the Christian community, which starts in the Christian community of your families, of your parish, of stations, of your dioceses, archdioceses, as well as the larger Christian community. Belonging to a Christian community, you are called with the term lay faithful. As lay faithful, you are called upon to participate and make a generous commitment to the service of the mission of evangelization. First of all, through the general witness of your daily lives lived in conformity with the gospel, in your family and at every level of responsibility. And in a particular way, you are called to place yourselves at the service of parish community. I would like to give emphasis on your first mission commitment, which is through the general witness of your lives lived in conformity with the gospel. This commitment, first and foremost, is the deepening of your faith you received in baptism, which includes the profound knowledge and putting in practice the profession of our Catholic faith the observance of the law of God, the Decalogue and the law of love of Jesus Christ. I invite you to examine yourselves, do you truly love God with all your heart and soul and have not worship and the alien gods or spirits which takes in many forms and so on. If these commandments of our God are not well understood yet deeply, then I encourage the parish committee on catechism and catechumenate to have a renewed discussion and reflection on this in the form and atmosphere of listening, sharing, and praying together. But we can also to remind you about the Christian community in family. St. Paul John Paul II in one of his homilies to the faithful in New York said, Catholic parents must learn to form their family as a domestic church, a church in the home, as it were, where God is honored, his law is respected, prayer is a normal event, virtue is transmitted by word and example, and everyone shares the hopes, the problems, and the suffering of everyone else. That is the journaling together where faith is lived in the reality of life of the family community. Your participation and commitment does not stop in your family, but the, that living faith in your family community encourages you more to place yourself in the service of the parish community. It is now the spirit that moves you to fulfill your mission in response and responsibility as a baptized Christian to share in the mission of the church. Placing yourselves at the service of the parish community, you may feel yourselves called or be called to work with your pastor in the service of the ecclesial community for its glow and life by exercising a great variety 
of ministries according to the grace and courage which the Lord has given you. Aside from the ecclesial ministries, you are called to give life to each member in your parish community and to your parish and archdiocese of Tanaha, in facing the different challenges. You may join your religious associations with the mission carries and strengthening your spiritual life and of reaching of the poor and needy in your parish community and beyond. I am aware that you join yourselves with your parish community to fight against the pandemic COVID-19. I conclude my address with the other mission challenges that Pope Francis challenges you to fight for our common home divide. The cyclical forces us to look at how human beings have desecrated our dear sister Earth and this act of desecration has ruined the lives of the human family. Pollution has made our common more and more like an immense pill of fear. Such pollution produces a broad spectrum of health hazards, especially for the poor, and causes millions of premature death. Pope Francis points out a new ecological culture the need to have distinctive ways of looking at things, informing the light men and women in the creation of this culture. Such culture is formed primarily in the context of family, in which we learn that art of gratitude through simplicity of family life. Praying together as a family is a concrete way of teaching the practice of gratitude. Our parishes can gather together to create community gardens that provide food for the neighborhood, learning once again to dwell in peace with the earth and one another. These practices create cultures of genuine solidarity and thus love. Pope Francis invites us as Catholics to participate in the recreation of this culture of love. Thank you and God bless you. And that they may want to get answers. This is not just from you, but from all of us. Yes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Our help is the name of the Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.
they are going back to the house, they will uh, prefer rest just a little and they will be going to find that. Since we don't have a mind to tell them, we say thank you for coming. May God see you through the rest of your journey. Thank you.